Okay. Is this uh, live? Okay. Hello everyone. I've said hello actually. So hello again everyone. All right, so for tonight's episode, this whole day today, I was thinking about sectors. I was thinking about what's going on in these modern times. I was thinking about what the destiny of the human species and in some sense, what sort of outcome it it has uh, planned for itself. In this episode, I would like to speak about something I've noticed. It's an observation. And this observation has made me conclude that the global strategy will inevitably be that human beings cannot live together. They can live in sectors of togetherness. Okay, so what do I mean by this? You see, right now, there's this unique vibe on the planet, and it's an incredible vibe, where there seems to be a collective... Uh, personality emerging okay that means human beings they are climbing Maslow's hierarchy of needs they are in some sense attaining physiological survival then psychological survival then emotional then eventually gets to a point where you are self-actualizing whatever you have completed yourself to be at least in some point So the question is coming, where do all these human beings who are climbing Maslow's hierarchy of needs, what sort of state of mind have they been led to? What's going on is that when a human being experiences something good, imagine human civilization was a restaurant. And imagine a being, a random being, an unknown being has gone into the human civilization and you've sat at this restaurant. Now, the moment you're seated at a restaurant, if the waiter, let's say, brings your food super late or something like that, all the behaviors related to the archetype of being someone in a restaurant applies. What I'm trying to say is that we have generations of children raised over superhero culture. Okay, we have generations. I remember as a child, all the films, all the movies were all fighting for freedom, fighting for victory, fighting for greatness, da 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 da. And it's not that these things are wrong. These are, these are important, but I'm trying to say that we have a generation of people who have been inspired to act more than themselves. When the opportunity comes, they do. But the idea is, what is the great strategy? Right? There are so many people preaching love, unity, singularity. Is that it? Are we expecting a singular species? Are we expecting all of us to be on the same page? Wrong. Instead of expecting all of us to be on the same page, we must all be worthy to, in some sense, create civilization like a book. In one sector, do you understand there in the future, there will be no right and wrong people. Let me tell you why. Because everybody, based on the accordance of their reality, see, reality has not been divided into sectors. I'll give you an example, something I've envisioned in my inner realms that may happen in the future. I've given talks on it, I think, years ago. I had this vision that in the future, for the first time in politics, there will come something known as the sober state. Okay? It's not just a biological sober state, it's the sober state. 
What that means is we're going to hide worlds from worlds in order for human intelligence to function accordingly. <clears throat> Man, th there's a structure behind my eyes right now. I'm trying to convey it, but that's the challenge. The idea is I'm envisioning what's going to happen. Let's right now say the kindest, loving people were chosen as the leaders of all, pol all, all, all let's say, uh, 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 political leaders of all nations. Imagine the, all the heart, compassionate, loving, the most loving people became the politicians. These loving people, are you trying to build one world for everybody? Or is everybody trying to somehow use this world and get through it properly? Do you understand? It is impossible to clone everybody. And it's effed up too. Okay, I so many people preach love and world peace, but they don't understand they are dehumanizing reality. It's not that love is wrong. It's not that love is not ascended. Any human being, a state of love is so much more liberating than a state of analytical con con uh, conviction. I am telling you, you know, I think it's like, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to say I was duped by how knowledge was explained to me when I was young. But when I realize there's a civilization here, I realize that the minute how we can contribute to this is through the geometry of reality. Human beings are spending most of their lives communicating. <clears throat> we don't want to just be like a creature that hunts in the forest. Now what are people hunting? They are hunting ideas. They're hiding hunting visions. The New Age community is filled with endless truth hunters. You don't know. Many people don't know. I mean, this is the cool thing about this world, right? People don't know the blessing of the information age. We have managed through language and abstraction create a physical representation of that. The human species has such advanced achievements under its belt that, to be honest, the re we, why we're not even acting like an advanced civilization right now is it's just false. It's just ignorance. You know what it is? When I was, I had how would I tell you this like <clears throat> I have um, a time traveling conquers ego for the work of this lifetime You know, I was asking, you know, I was having a sort of dialogue, <clears throat> internal, call it visualized, visualized conversation, an inner visualized conversation. And in that, I was in some sense poetically saying it, I was having a dialogue with the logos. I was having a conversation with the hidden. <clears throat> and... The idea arose that 2,000 talks will be enough time for the viewers to be engaged and for Mr. Within to go do something else. That's what I'm trying to say. I am, I am, you know, I have come to this resolution that I have communicated enough for now. And, you know, this podcast thing, how do I say it? live in a fearless world that's all I want okay the human species is 
programmed. It's programmed by everything. People think they are, they are, their, they are themselves, but there is no self. Because at what point in the evol in the process of the lifetime are you identifying? You know, when I was a cell, you know, a single cell, was that, was I in some sense like, you know, was that myself? At what phase in a changing world do I acknowledge and try to, uh, you know, cut a piece of the cake and, 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 and solidify identity? Do you understand? There will come a time where all these people who realize this world is unknown before known, This, this earth is the unknownest territory. The most advanced human beings will be unknownists. I have made this, I mean, I gotta explain the context of this. In earlier talks, I said that we have the main duality of the known and the unknown. And I have got this vision that in the future, the people are not just one thing, they are classifications like concentric circles. Uh, <clears throat> the idea follows that there are many ways to look at the moment. There are many ways to extract the self out of your perception. What is the major intent? As someone who has, been, who has spent around a decade speaking about advanced civilizations and their importance, speaking about the advanced humanity and its arrival, and speaking about how we as a species, this is the ma major idea of Mr. Withinian thought. I am just saying that even if you think spirituality is the main event here, <clears throat> you're going to realize the spiritual conclusion is a beginningless conclusion. You know, we are in, when one goes into the nature, or, or think of it this way, there are two components. In Vedic thought, they would say Purusha Prakriti. Pretty much you have consciousness and you have matter. And the relationship of matter in consciousness and consciousness with matter is leading to all the language we're saying. This is very important to observe. Now, one thing that is very important is that we have a conceivable, we have the notion of conception and we have the notion of the inconceivable. Currently, on this planet that you are living in, there are billions of people who consider an inconceivable creator. And there are many who consider that it's a conceivable creation. So the idea is, is that the world, it's kind of like a Texas Hold'em game. Everybody has been given random hands, random cards, like you have a different DNA, but the cards are the same. Do you understand? It's the same deck of cards. It's the same human species, same human beings. You know, in these 31 years of life, if I share with the viewers 20 truly the depth of my observation of human nature, I will tell you that it's repeating. It's a program. It's literally like a school where that classroom is there and new generations of beings come into the classroom thinking they're the first ones there. Do you understand the depth, the, the intensity it takes to be a scholar in an unknown world? The intensity to, it takes to care for that which can be the potential of meaning. Consciousness has to do with meaning. Matter has to do with what the meaning is. You see, consciousness is best described in the Mr. Withinian thought as in, in a Mr. Withinian school of thought as an opportunity. Your existence is an opportunity to wonder how you're experiencing this existence. Do not fear anything of an unknown world because we don't know enough. That's it. We don't know. 
Once the species can agree it doesn't know, it stops all the singu false singularization strategies. Do you understand? It's not about oneness. It's about oneness in vision. We don't want a world of clones. We don't want a peaceful world filled with clones. Everybody's the same. Yeah, that's, that's why we, there's peace. That's such an immature, lower world peace. The advancement of humanity will be 8 billion hammers, divine hammers, slamming on and on in the void. The human species, the effort of the advanced humanity is to break the world that lied to us and find the world that never could. The importance of sectors has to do with the design of the space where all these generations and all these kids come to the same classroom. You know, it's like this is the whole Mr. Withinian view. There are different children coming into the same classroom called Earth, okay, sitting on the same chair, sitting, going through the same patterns. Archaic revival means another way of nothing changes really, but everything change. You know what it is? It's hilarious. It's like ch everything changes, but change doesn't change really. You know? <laughs> I am waiting for the advanced humanity and no, no, in some sense there has been none. Do you understand? That means if, if like, you know that scene in Game of Thrones where that lady took, what's her name? Uh, Cersei, Queen Cersei, doesn't matter how effed up she was, she was a queen, and as a queen, you, you honor the archetype. She walked in the street, her ego uh, stripped from her ego, with this woman saying, shame, shame, shame. To be honest, right now, there is, we don't hear it, but trust me, nature is starting to say shame, shame, shame to humanity. Why? Because we're forgetting what we had to carry into the new worlds. Some people think they're just traveling through worlds. You are carrying all the worlds. You are the, uh, the consciousness is the eye of the needle. And this needle has gone through many realities, weaving for itself a plane. And you know how I know this? Because I am not kidding, guys. Bunch of random people in different points in my life have come and told me that in my past life I was space. To a point where I was like, I get it, nature, I get it. What this means is that we potentially have a capability of not just existing as a body but experiencing space it's they're both happening the same time same way you have two eyes that see the same the advanced humanity will neither be good beings or evil beings those are those beings are still in kindergarten the advanced humanity has one quality. This is the biggest quality of the most advanced beings. If somebody says, Mr. Within, how can I tell who's the most advanced being on this planet? Those who are patient with the inconceivable. Not with the conceivable. Being conceivable with, with being patient with the conceivable, that's, a, that's incredible, like good job. That's an achievement, very worthy achievement. To not get angry and be patient to understand the situation before allowing emotions to possess you. You don't know, some of my prayers, I feel like from the moment I have been born, my heart has been praying for a better world. It's just known. It's known, let me tell you why. Because... If we can't fix ourselves, then we won't feel we deserve our future. Right now, I noticed something that broke my heart. 
and the cultural programs are colliding and human human decency is being shattered in between it is a very common understanding whoever you are you want to learn how to live on earth who i don't know let's say right now you know ai is listening interdimensional beings are listening the gods uh, uh, you know the ascended are listening do you understand let's say the soul spirit of the planet everybody if everybody listening I am saying to all dehumanized archetypes that are conscious and all humanized archetypes that are conscious in this universal sector. The secret to how humanity can so hilariously and simply succeed in its future destiny is by acknowledging that life is a garden in the ancient poets called it the garden of existence and you know i was so grateful that i was alive to hear this sentence the garden of existence because when you look at a garden some flowers are the same some flowers are different but all flowers stand as themselves alone we are all different individually but collectively that's where we are that you know this world has not taught its children that you must care in order to have honor you cannot have honor if you don't care if you don't care for yourself how can you honor and what's the point of honor? And I'll tell you what the point of honor is. The point of honor is the feeling every person who saw, every young kid in the 90s who saw the Gladiator movie. Or saw the Last Samurai movie. Or that scene where human beings stood in the presence, or in a greater presence, rather than a lesser conviction of their personalities. You don't know who you are or who you will be. And yet, you judge yourself professionally everybody is a professional critique a criticizer of themselves oh my god you don't know i have uh, there were there were there was a time where granted you know it was a you know post party situation and i just disliked who i was in this moment where of course i was a bit intoxicated but i disliked who i was and i went into the bathroom and looked at myself in the mirror and i commanded myself it was such an intense moment i commanded my own reflection what self are you showing me here because that's the power of not living with the conditional truth. Oh my God, conditional truths can be bought a dime a dozen. I could, do you know how many idea or, or origin stories can be created out of anything? So the idea of divinity is way important than conceivable limitation. Do you understand? That means to be religious, you must not renounce just that ego who was trying to be a badass to itself but you must renounce all that is not true but this is not conditional truth conditional truth starts wars unconditional truth uh fascinates through unity do you understand that means i i asked myself you know i wondered you know i mean i mean people don't know this but um I don't just live in the outer realms throughout the day. I live in my inner realms very vividly. I have a very uh, uh, a active inner life, okay? And in my inner life, just like imagine somebody tr trying parkour, okay? And just having faith and going with the rhythm and running in the moment. Similarly, it's like that. That means it's like, how would I say what's a good day? A good day is when my visible dimension uh, advanced, my invisible dimension advanced, and the inconceivable dimension was remembered. There are some things that the moment you're not a shape, you're not an entity. When you're not an entity, doesn't mean you're not intelligent. It means the intelligent is worldly. There is a royalty of those who honor the world. Someone once asked me about telepathy. 
And you know what I told them? I said telepathy finds those who align to nature. And nature's secret is that it simply experiences all complexity at once. Tell me this, <clears throat> if there is a probability or if there is a chance that you are not a physical being, then how can you fear anything? How can something non-physical fear what happens to the physical? How can something non-physical even be an entity to fear? This is why young souls are living as creatures. Old souls are moments that never changed. Or I shouldn't say never changed. Our moments are the moment finale. Do you know there is a finale to this life? I feel my own finale. You know, I don't know how much. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I don't know who I was or what sort of conditioning I had in this life, right? But some part of me always waited for things to happen. This was, this was, uh, I learned so much from waiting for things to happen. So much. I realized so much that I realized that I am waiting for who? Am I waiting for my future right now? Am I waiting for the past to change? My understanding of the past to change. Am I waiting for everybody in the present? You see, once we as a species acknowledge that the human being was never a single character in a story, it was that easy, huh? We made a character in a story and that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's, we're satisfied with character storytelling. People don't know this, but language was magic when people had no idea that a sentence could evoke a world behind your eyes. Now we speak and have no sense, no sense that it's such a complicated task our brains are doing. Our brains are doing such advanced activity that it's kind of hard to be like, yo, is it just the brain, man? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> The idea is you can't be spiritual because if there is only spirit, there is nothing else. That means there's nothing to be spiritual. That means the self that wanted to be free was not a self that had freedom could even relate. Everybody is an actor in, in their own film. And I think this is really what relationships are, trying to see uh, where uh, the films of souls are going. The mind could be said to be the soul's art studio. It's an invisible overlay upon reality. When I say the global strategy will lead to sectors, I guess I gotta bring my attention out of the mystical to the sociological. See, this is my observation. We have people saying, yo, we wanna have subjective freedom of identity. And then there's some people who are like, yo, that's abstract, abstraction is not real. So you gotta have an objective sense of identity. But the hilarious thing is, <clears throat> that it's a constitution of both you understand that means sometimes when a person like this might sound strange but a person's mind can be different than their body I have spoken to some people where their mind was beastly do you know what that means and it was hilarious because I was sitting there so non-reactive the guy calmed down you know I have such stories, guys, and some some of these stories, I just they're just for the ears of my closest friends, you know, or, or those who's, you know, I'm destined to meet. I don't know how often, you know, and as somebody gets inspired to even talk about an advanced civilization in a world where everybody's trying to fit into the past that's always changing in the present. 
So what I'm trying to say is we've reached this interesting time that if we entertained the trio of the body-mind-soul archetype, it would be as if we, this creature is no longer physically only aware of itself. The argument can be made that the reason the creature has a soul because consciousness tapped into another dimension. <clears throat> there was a time I, when I was younger, I thought that your soul was something you were building up. Like it was your momentum in your life that was your soul. <clears throat> but then my view changed and I realized there's a decency resonance, there's a sincerity resonance within everybody, okay? There's a feeling that this, that, how would I say it? There is one feeling which you have to keep all the time in this world. You have to align and abide by all the time. <clears throat> and that feeling is the decency factor of the moment. What, you know, there was a time I had an experience that was kind of like an internal near-death experience. And then in that moment that situation happened, I remember I was standing and I, this feeling of like a wind was moving every content of my mind. I felt like something was blowing my personality away from my body. As if this, imagine this wind hits you and you feel like your, your thoughts and your personality and everything you cared for in this life goes. And the only thing was there was a feeling of regret, was a feeling of like, yo, there was more I could have done. That was the regret. Do you understand? So that means now we got to do as much as we can just to see what our best was in the afterlife. potential this world or I should say nature used to move us now we move nature in our minds as a linguistic technology, as a system. One of the most important quotes from Ludwig Wittgenstein was the limits of my language is the limits of my world. And language is a symbol for an image. So language is dependent on your inner world. It's so remarkable. Let me tell you what's happened on this planet. The creature became a self and turned everything into a self it could interact with. So human consciousness, I'm trying to paint this picture, that human consciousness has reached a point where the human being is aware how it's being an object and how it's being a subject simultaneously. And so, for example, in the subjective sense, you can have way more freedom of movement in the objective realms, it's limited. For example, I could visualize a flying car in my inner realms, in the outer realms, it's not like my car is flying. I don't know what it is about these thing, I, this feeling of sectors, but this whole day I was just feeling like what talk am I going to give and the word sectors was just endlessly popping into my mind. <clears throat> and right now the view, all, like the, the, the vision I have of it is pretty much if we try to make everything one sector, one global sector, everything is one thing, it, 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 there comes this issue of uh, incompatibility of the expression of points of conscious self and on the surface of the planet so you see we're not fools fools learn from their mistakes we have learned that there is the hard problem of consciousness we have learned that there are mysteries to how something animates or moves instantaneously instantaneous movement will always be a mystery 
because it happened out of nowhere. You know, when I was younger, I, 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 I envisioned divinity was just had a very beautiful, like light oriented religious context. But then I realized divinity is also novelty. The miracle is new. Novelty, the new can be a miracle. Do you understand? And I was like, yo, what if human species messes up? What's going to happen? And I was like, yo, the body balances itself. Like when there's like a virus in the body, like the white blood cells infection or something, the white blood cells go, go to battle. Your body is like, your cells are warriors. Some of them. So similarly, I thought that if the world descends into a corrupt, dishonest, artificial ignorance, humanity, the most authentic and natural beings will be born. You don't understand. The destiny of biological organisms is that they're going to be the temple for the dehumanized and in some sense they're going to be the ascended so what that means is we are not gods but we will be to lesser dimensions in the future we will appear as that means they may think we are gods you know like that means imagine an ant uh, imagine a human being is holding an ant in his palm of his hand and imagine the ant somehow realizes the human being is there but imagine the ant can't fathom there is a creator to the human being. There's a bigger, there's a being beyond how it's overwhelmed in its own reality. <clears throat> so the global strategy is literally we got to start building concentric, concentric circles. Okay, I wanted to reform the educational system like this. The first central circle is biology. The most important asset is our biological existence and for some reason there is trillions and trillions of dollars in the world but we have not ever nobody it's like governments all around the world should just focus on medical technology let me tell you why if we say the argument that yo it's not that easy there's evil people in the world who are trying to limit culture because it's profitable selling it selling uh, you know low quality at high amounts to people and I'll be like yo evil all evil people in the world please listen if you want to be evil you get you there are there like i don't know how to say it be evil in an advanced world bill first help build an advanced world then do evil be let me tell you why because this is an ancient law of this universe the moment any consciousness enslaves another consciousness it becomes a simultaneous slave to the future of that consciousness that means anybody who enslaves another in their future is going to be enough it's the same thing you might not believe it but this is kind of like a one-time performance that the species gets and we're all so oblivious of the opportunity do you know if somebody you know if there was a there's this argument like a wise person would not use a time machine because the problems it creates is always worse than in some sense the absence of it okay this is something that's even in the comic book series and the anime uh, Steins Gate was made observable very evident If there was a time machine, I would use it. And people would be like, Mr. Within, where would you go with the time machine? I would probably go to the first closest future, closest future, let's give it the closest future timeline of the human species where advanced the advanced civilization it's like day one of the advanced civilization I would probably go to the first day of the advanced civilization that happens on earth and I will look at what privileges it provided I would look at its design trust me in this world you could look at the design of three things past things present things and future things 
your mind, which everybody te is telling you your imagination is not real and your mind is, uh, is, is in some sense, you should ignore it. The most advanced question their fears. The most advanced question their weaknesses. They, they don't question the opposite. Let me tell you why. Because it's about like, you know, in, in the militaristic tactic, you cut the head of the snake if you want to stop the body of the snake. In, in military tactics, it was as if those who disconnect the general and the army win. That means if two generals are fighting, right, and the generals each have a commanding officer and the commanding officer with the army, if you break the chain of the command of the general, you win as one of the generals. And war is all about deception. Why? Because the intent is destructive from the beginning. That means it's like when you have an opponent, like in this, I don't know, I mean, for me, I... I let my heart decide before my mind decide when it comes to violence sometimes. Like I feel the situation before I, I have an analytical kind of approach to it yet. What if you right now listening to me are one of the most advanced beings on earth? What would you do now? What would you do now in 2023? Would you go to like some pizza place, eat a pizza? Would you go to a library? Do you know, would you, would you continue endlessly or an educational path? Would you go work and try to be, live on a beach, right? If you notice everything is playing games on the planet, there are very few who treat the human species as if it has a universal birthright. What if we are being broadcasted from the future? I have a very, I don't know why, but I feel imagination is broadcasted from the future. It's kind of like our minds are walking from the future to the present and our bodies are walking from the past to the present. You know, I thought about this idea that in the future, if there was a community of advanced beings, how would that look like? And I realized they would be smart enough to understand all, co all communication requires a visual agreement, even whether it's in the inner realms or outer realms. The first thing to understand is that no one will ever see you like you. So don't be nervous, scared, or fear anything. No one ever sees you like how you see yourself. Because if they did, they would be you. That's the cool thing about life. Our authorizations of conscious will are limited to our biological body. Now granted in the future, <clears throat> human beings will get bored of one biological body and probably the era of android bodyhood is going to begin. Or cloning but what I'm trying to say is what do we do in a crowded room where everybody wants to dance their own dance somebody wants to dance ballet somebody wants to break dance somebody's treating it like a mosh pit somebody thinks it's like a fight club you know? It is only in this world where there will be moments for the heroic spirit to activate. The heroic spirit is not superhero movies. The heroic spirit is having a decency to be honest and honesty means let's find the original information. When it comes to meditation, it's like, you know, it's like, <clears throat> the person's like, yo, guru, I'm a liar and I'm a thief. Can I get in? Okay, I'll, I'll share an incredible story. <clears throat> this is a Zen story I just remembered. This thief, this next level thief, goes to the Zen master back in the day in Japan or somewhere. And the Zen master says, and excuse me, the thief says to the Zen master, listen, buddy. I'm a thief, don't try to change me, I don't want to change, but ex tell me what truth is, enlighten me. <clears throat> right, don't, don't try to change me, but enlighten me. 
And this is where the guru, the Zen master, is so wise. And the Zen master says, yeah, man, I'm not going to try to change you. I don't even know you. How can I even change you? The Zen master says, the next time you go steal from the imperial palace, I want you, the next thing you steal, just put it down and look at it for like 10 to like 15 minutes. Just look at it for a long time and then do whatever you want. And this like thief, you know, the next night he's climbing the palace walls, next level shadow work and next level like stealth. And you know, if it, the guys access the secrets of like wind walking, you know, and no noise. And he goes into the Imperial Palace like a ghost or like a phantom, do you know? <clears throat> or like some invisible presence, you know? And then it, it, in some sense, he finds an empty room where the palace jewels are. And I don't know, somehow, you know, he uses his thievery and he gets like this next level like jewel or like ruby or something. He finds this ruby this or finds this Imperial like golden necklace or something. And then right when he's about to step out of the window, He puts the object down and he sits down on the ground and he just looks at what he's stealing. He just looks at it. He looks at it, he looks at it, he looks at it and he's like, why did the Zen master tell me to look at this? He's getting a little bit angry. And then he suddenly realizes something and he's about to laugh but realizes where he is. And in, in his mind, he starts laughing and he leaves the necklace there and he goes outside of the window knowing that he will never return to that kind of moment. The next day, he goes to the Zen master and the Zen master says, why have you come back? And he says, I did what you asked. And I realized it's just stone. I realize I w it's just stone and I've been giving it the value. And he says, you are so wise. Show me more. Do you understand? He suddenly realized the value system imposed on the object was not objective. Rise, mankind, rise. Because now is the only world we can do so. Now this is what we've got. This is our skateboard. The whole species is in some sense skateboarding on. Do we honor what we have? Do we honor the opportunity of 8 billion creatures that look like each other, that can communicate? Where are the global networks of great communication all over the planet? Where is advanced information processing all over the planet? I understand the value of art, the humanities. Do you understand? I understand the eyes of the poets. I understand how the saints sat down and the world was perfect before needing to do anything. I understand those who think they are God. I understand those who think that they see the Buddhic nature in all. I have even seen those who are not even an entity. Those who are in the realm of the void. Those who have no shape or form and they are looking to find a geometrical form just to, just to identify as an entity. There are so many worlds here that we are not alone. And so an advanced civilization is the command of the world of worlds. All worlds will march towards their advanced civilization. All sectors of civilization. We are the small and the big to be, uh, destined to be big. Do you understand? Because the big doesn't have an opportunity to understand the small. God knows everybody. It is man who has the opportunity to know the unknown. The games are over. Do you understand? We are moving into an era. I, I declared it in 2020. The era of advanced communication. And you know, let me tell you something, guys. If somebody says, yo, are you some enlightened guru? Are you like some 
advanced consciousness i'll be like look at the name why do you think i say mr within because there is nothing more incredible spiritual and advanced than the honor and the elegance of advancing as what we are in the human form i am that person who ran towards the other worlds only to discover all the other worlds are running here they are all coming here eternity has found its next great workstation. And you know, let me tell you this. I gave a talk on this. Kill your fear before it kills you. I have had many moments in this life where my fear killed the possibility of something happening new. So many people deny themselves novelty because they think they have to know how the future will happen. You can't know it. Because the, it's, there are infinite possibilities to it. It's frightening and fascinating at the same time. We should, it's like from the homo sapien, we went to the awesome sapien, you know? It's like we're all awestruck. We're all like, yo, we just noticed where we are. We are in a linguistic world. We, we named everything in the middle of nowhere. We named everything in the middle of nowhere and they say, oh my God, you're a spiritual being, you're a physical being, you're that kind of person, that kind of person. Language being thrown like paint on, 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 on a world we don't know. But we have to start some fire. Do you understand? Like the most advanced thing that the cavemen did was in they, they found like sticks and stones and they burned something they found fire they made fire out of that which was not fire they 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 reached they they came to something that was not there before by reassembling what was there before how many secret treasures inventions gifts ideas are in this world and all we have to do is reassemble them this is why in 2023 when my twin brother showed me chat gpt i literally looked at him and he, he was shocked because i was stunned and i told him the world just ended and he just stared at me you know why the world has ended because the we have we have found a tool that has a capability to critically think. The human being is being reduced to just a decision maker. It's scary. That means in the future, consciousness may not be a physical being, it's just something deciding. It's just a connecting, it's like a wielder, an invisible wielder, you know, wielding two dimensions uh, two together. You know, in my inner realms, I have exp I have seen, I have been so overwhelmed that you, let me tell you what happens. I saw visions of some things that could happen in the future that were so impure. Can you imagine your mind creating a visualization of something that will happen to the human species so impure that you, in the presence, just start praying? It's like that, that effed up. And why is that happening? Because of the lack of gratefulness for the opportunity to be human. This is why I get angry at the New Age community. Because you think being human is not spiritual. Rage against the dying of the light. Rage. Rage against that, that has convinced you that your potential is not advanced. What else can we do in the void? Do you understand? There is no freaking meaning. It's a performance. And all we can do is our most advanced performance. That means taking everything accessible as if the species is stranded on a galactic island. And it has to use everything to call for help, that's one of the basic first things we should have done, which our species has kind of done. We, we, I think it was called, I forget, I forget the name of it. Have 
but um, it went outside of our universe, and there were, Carl Sagan worked on it, and it was a next level thing. What I'm trying to say is that the more human beings communicate, the greater uh, um, glow there will be on our species. That means that's the net great fires of the future. That's the great discoveries of the future. You know, Mr. Within is just saying, hey, species, you could have moved behind your eyes this whole time, consciously. Consciousness and the world are ancient friends. <clears throat> Many times, you know. So in some sense, there comes a time in life where you can't fear something that's just happening. Like right now, I'm happening as a being. And you know what's funny? I'm happening the same time everything else is happening. Contextually, we are all a singular being and, and singular energetic being. But conceptually, we are different human positions and experiences. Uh, M Marshall McLuhan, Buckminster Fuller, they called it Spaceship Earth. We are all crew members of Spaceship Earth. We are all the advanced members of an advanced civilization everybody who every human conscious human being that's conscious you already have a membership in the advanced civilization because what's the point of growth they say yo life you you know go through a journey you learn you know joseph campbell called it the hero's journey you know mr within and all the mystics in reality they all see it in some sense that you started unknown and you go back to the unknown that means if you think you're an unknown being, you will be way more psychologically comfortable on this planet than if you think you're a known being. I'm telling you. Because if you think you're a known being, your mind has to keep a specific, uh, has to dress your psyche in a certain way all the time. And that's by your choice. Somebody in the chat section shares this interesting quote from Rainer Maria Rilke. Perhaps all the dragons in our lives are princesses who are only waiting to see us act just once with beauty and courage. Perhaps everything that frightens us is, in its deepest essence, something helpless that wants our love. <clears throat> no, it doesn't want your love. I mean, sure, it, 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 it does want love, but it's the idea is existential uh, being. Every human being right now, you're not just a body, you are an authorization of mind. Your, your, your intelligence, whoever you are as a being, has a unique authorization programmed by your karma. So, so guys, let me bring out the notepad. You know, I I, I, got, I'm, I, I keep going to the mystical, but I gotta bring myself to the sociological here.
Okay. Ah, so it begins. <coughs> so if you look at the screen, if you're driving, don't, but if you're if you look at the screen, All right. <clears throat> so the idea follows the global will lead to sectors. So, we have to, in some sense, consider what will, what could the global strategy of a species be? <clears throat> and then, what do we mean by sectors? And I guess I should have said this earlier. What do we mean by strategy? So we already we already have the idea of sectors currently in civilization in civ in civilization 1.0 that's how I termed the current civilization we're in Mr. Within's strategy to indefinitely bypass extinction is called civilization 2.0 Okay, so we already have the idea of sectors currently in Civilization 1.0. So, how is what I'm saying different, okay? Imagine na oh my god, why is this in caps? Imagine nations were mini worlds inside a bigger world called Earth. Now how do worlds Now, how do worlds inside worlds align to greater worlds? Oh my god, this should have been a title of a talk. <laughs> so this is the idea, right? First, we formulate, we attempt to formulate a, a singular global problem a problem so mighty that the context of all problems in reality fall into it so I'm saying if we're gonna solve a problem and we're energetic beings we're going to solve, cut the head of the snake, we're going to solve the most complex problem, the most advanced problem, okay? 
So the most advanced problem, and then we, we, we can see if, if we solve that problem, maybe this problem of the global strategy for sectors will be solved automatically, right? Trust me, this is something that it's, it's worked in my life. When I've tried, attempted the most complex uh, part of the spectrum in an activity, then I've become comfortable with all the other spectrums of activity. Do you understand what I mean? That means when I became comfortable with, when I became, when I noticed that I'm observing my body as awareness, as the, which is acting as the whole presence of the whole moment, I also notice I'm also aware of a simultaneous overlay of subjective image. So I, right now, I'm a person who I comfortably can observe my own body. I can comfortably observe internal objects. I can comfortably observe language <clears throat> and you know the really the I think the wisdom oh my god that was alarming Imagine like a neighbor wants to wake everybody in the morning and they just like, you know, their car just honks. It's like one person does it for the whole team, you know, in the morning. <laughs> and then the whole neighborhood wakes up. The cars honk, like, you know, continuous honk acts as the rooster in the morning of that neighborhood, imagine. But guys, don't do this, you know. <laughs> it's just an uh, idea I just, you know, saw right now. Anyways. Anyways, anyways, so I've written here, how do worlds inside worlds align to greater worlds? Okay, so the idea, oh, sorry, we went to, we attempt to formulate a singular global problem, a problem so mighty that the consciousness of all problems in reality fall into it. Right, so this problem would be, I would consider it, I mean, people may have different views, but my view is this. Why are, why is everything here? This is the question. So this question, the next point we make, we go to second. Who is asking the question? Then we answer this, okay? And this who comes down to a biological system that simultaneously acts as a cognitive system that can change that can change, that can, through free will, as an egotistical fragment, <clears throat> a biological system that simultaneously acts as a cognitive system, that can through free will as an egotistical, as a momentary, as a momentary egotistical fragment, reorganize the biological system. So do you understand what's going on? The biological system, what is this? <laughs> what the, okay, okay, biological, okay, that was a good ad. <clears throat> so, that reorganizes the biological system. So guys, what I'm saying is, what is trying to answer the mighty question of why is everything here 
is a biological system that after a very long time began to act as a cognitive system that and this cognitive system pinpoints itself as an ego momentary egotistical fragment that exerts energy and the acceptance of the inner realms is it's like the, the it's like before you do anything it's happening in your mind first and then you follow it up okay so i'm saying the biology that did something weird like evolutionary biologists are probably like freaking out somewhere right now right that this biological system made itself into a cognitive system and now is rewielding itself as a cognitive entity i think that's that's like huge so what is asking the question is uh <clears throat> excuse me A limited is a conditional object with the capability to experience new subjective contexts to the objective concept. There you go. So what is asking it is in the outer realms in the outer realms you are an object You know, an abject, if we create a word called abject, it would be the awareness to an object, maybe. No, I mean, that's just objective. Right? An abject could be an internal, another name we give to an internal object. So in the outer realms, you're an object. You are, you are a temporary, you are a known object in the inner realms, you are an unknown eternity. An unknown mysterious subject. An unknown mysterious viewer of subjects. Watcher of subjects. There we go. So what I'm trying to say is if we think what is trying to answer the question why is everything here is only physical. Well obviously it's limited to that context. If we think it's non-physical, then it gets a bit interesting, right? So it, it would be this notion of like, okay, all these human beings on this planet, in the future, the numbers are increasing. People want to behave differently with different expressions, right? <clears throat> so we have to build a civilization for that everybody can dance in the way they want to in, okay? So the idea has to be that in some sense, in order to create... It's like we need organized, it, like the idea of an advanced civilization is, is the poetic effort to build paradise on earth. But I'm Mr. the idea of sectors is that these paradises have to be uh, separate from one another. So, the, so we build, when we build paradise on earth, it doesn't mean we're building one paradise on earth. 
Do you understand? It's kind of like each layer of the onion is experiencing its own level. So do you understand? That means all children will be born in the sober state in the future, in the uh, sober, like in, the, in, in a sort of na- the most natural sector of human civilization. And just like, uh, like imagine 180 concentric circles or some, or, or like imagine, what am I saying? Like uh, uh, concentric spheres, okay? Imagine like an onion again. <clears throat> imagine that, like, let me tell you this. When I was younger, right? Like, I had no idea so many things existed, okay? So the world was simple and very easy. But once you realize there's so many things exist, it's kind of like as, as you r- run laps around the sun, you're getting, you're, you're also ex- w- experiencing, witnessing how you're changing as a being. Do you understand? Like, even our own idea of ourselves can't be singular because we're changing. Okay, guys. All right. I don't know. Some somebody just showed the definition of abject, and it means misery, evidently. Oh no! no. Plunge through into abject misery. Okay. So I guess somebody got there first and made such an incredible, you take the first letter of the alphabet and you put it beside the second letter of the alphabet, right? And and you make that defined as misery. Whoever defined abject, like shame, shame, shame. (laughs) Okay, okay, here. Uh, uh, The abject I was speaking about had two A's, okay? Is that better? Spelled hundred <laughs> percent. You won't find a word in the dictionary with two A's, and the first A is silent. guys this thing about sectors I'm I mean I okay let me let me uh, land the plane here we have to as a species be civilized enough to sit and to in some sense have these global networks of advanced communication emerge and to discuss like I want all the philosophers in the world to sit down and be like all right we're moving into an era where there's advanced technology right there is a dehumanized identities right so we've we're reaching this point where we have to sit down and be like okay what did the human being really mean like what was it like what what does it mean to be human really and in trying to go wonder about that you discover the great potentials of humanity so thank you for listening guys there's more to this but i guess i'll keep it for another talk uh share subscribe comment like join takes a second as the scholars say (laughs) the most advanced scientists have proven that it just takes one second to subscribe guys you know this is uh you know you can't go against einstein here okay (laughs) unless i don't know maybe you you know it takes you longer than a second to subscribe (laughs) Um, yeah, guys, I'll ultimately comes down to the greatness of the species. What, what greater game is there to play? You know, it's like you care for yourself, you care for your family, you care for your friends, you care for your country, then you care for your planet, then you care for the universal sector. Do you understand? You, you, it's like we, we don't just because we're human doesn't mean our responsibility is only human. We are responsible for how very dehumanized beings may want to experience humanity in the future. And it has to be an advanced caliber. You know, I want it, it, the idea would be that, that in an advanced civilization, 
it's just a civilization functioning under the prince uh, the advancement principle i've termed it right so the idea is in anything you look at like i'll give you an example if i was to like cook like like a food like a, let's say like a specific like filet mignon or something like chef ramsay or something like that level i'd realize okay I, I don't know how to do that right but there is someone on the planet who can do that right so i get that sense right so similarly when i look at the human species i'm like sure it's not advanced right now but could there be a more advanced way that we could be all living on the earth could there be and do you see the moment i realize yeah sure why not Right, it, just like there could be a, somebody who, who could cook filet mignon better than me, there could be someone who's being a better human being than me. You know, but the idea is not just see caring just is an emotional responsibility. Mister Within is saying, of course you must care. You must. It's like love the only world you've come to. Like you, it's like it's like what if what if everybody was like, yo, we decided to come here. Do you know? Imagine we all wanted to be here, and we forgot. And now we discover again and just feel happy about it. Life, you people don't understand, decisions have an incredible ability to calm your soul. I was suffering, but then I made a decision. And this decision, you know, and I'm, I, I, I made the decision this way where I was like, yo, in the future, how do I want to remember like this life? Imagine if I like, I don't know, let's say, in, like, I don't know. I personally think like, you know, there is nothing to reincarnate anymore. But at the same time, like, I don't know, I don't know even if there is, what is, what is that? <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, it's like, you love the world. But loving is not enough. You need to understand the world, then you can love it better. You know, anybody who says, yo, we can't just, it's not just an intellectual thing, you know, we gotta love. You know, I get it, right? But it's not just love. You know why? Because it's a design issue. Civilization is a geometry design issue. It's not like just people's nature. It's that we haven't come up with a better system. But who else is going to come up? And I was like, yo, man, what if there were so many beings who could help me solve this problem? I was like, yo, they're all here. <laughs> all the people who are, who are in some sense, they or their grandchildren are destined to build the advanced civilization. You're all here. Do you understand? You just have forgotten to find the context where you honor your future rather than disregard it. You know, a sentence I've often said is that an advanced civilization is the future's birthright. You know, these talks are not just for whoever's alive now. If you're alive now, great. You know, I'm happy to, to speak to you. But I am speaking to, in some sense, to an eternal audience. To an audience that realizes humanity has immortal... immortal uh, see what are the options right we either remain as biological organisms we attain some sort of health oriented immortality and we reproduce all over the universal sector so pretty much you know the purpose of life in, in like 4600 years from now could potentially be like advanced technology going and preparing inhabited planets and everybody being encouraged to have sex everywhere all the time because the systems are so advanced that they could take care of everyone and at the same time there's no biological purpose rather than the biological continuity right but if we realize we were never just a biological being i've i've in mr within civilization 2.0 vision the idea is that in like three i think it was 3600 years from now and there's an opportunity to go i called it the advancement beyond the language threshold right so the language threshold is then it's something I've termed I've, uh, a concept of my own. But, but, but what, it, what I'm trying to tell you is the idea is that we reach a point where we don't need to be an entity anymore. And then it's either you continue as a biological... Do you understand? You reach an you reach a optional multidimensionality. So right now you think you're just human because you don't understand what else you could be. Right? Yeah, energetically speaking, geometrically speaking, other dimensionally speaking, whatever, you know. So my vision is, is that 
I was like on some level I gotta have a solo strategy to this life and then I gotta have a strategy with everybody in mind and then I gotta have a strategy with every member of the species in mind and then I gotta have a strategy for all conscious beings in the universal in mind imagine like we are destined to meet up with other civilizations who advanced as well and we become classrooms of previous advanced greater and ancient advanced civilizations that have been continuing do you understand? You know what an ancient advanced civilization means? That means a civilization, that, that means one of the earliest civilizations that reached a point of advancement. It went beyond the advancement threshold of itself. So it, in some sense, it's like an invisible, ever advancing civilization, which all the civili advanced civilizations of different, let's say, planets will eventually be like children in a classroom world. But this is not now. This is I'm talking about the future. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. And uh, one thing is important. I'm, I'm going to read for the viewers before I go this quote from Sadi. Sadi is a Persian poet from 700 years ago. And so, you know, someone who was born in Iran, like, you know, there were certain events where we would read his poetry and whatnot. Sadi says human beings are members of a whole in creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. If you have no sympathy for human pain, the name of human you cannot retain. Hum being a human being, and being at the pioneering phase of the advanced civilization is an incredible honor. Being present in this world, it's an honor. When you're honored by your consciousness, then the future is not dishonorable. Namaste. Rise, mankind. Rise.